I mean, yeah, I'm sure that sounds like fun to her. Going out on joy rides in the middle of the night, going to the bar with your buddies, going fishing, going hunting. I mean, she thinks you're a hero. Well, look who gets to suck. Look who gets to be the lame mom, stuck at home, doing the dishes, cleaning the toilet. I mean, no wonder she wants to be a boy. She thinks I'm a piece of This is not about you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Who would choose to be a girl? That's a clip from Cowboys. Uh, it's out today on digital platforms, a phrase I hadn't actually uttered ever before. Uh, until a few months ago. It stars, uh, st amongst other people, Steve Zahn, who joins us. I'm just trying to see where you are, Steve. Is that your uh, Hollywood trailer that I can see in the background? Yeah, that's it. I'm in the... Uh, <laughs> no, I'm on a farm in Kentucky. That's where I live. So when I'm not shooting a movie, I'm cutting things, weed whacking, you know, cutting up trees, feeding horses and goats, and picking up dirt. Yeah. I, Im I imagine it's a very useful... It's, I mean, it's actually kind of relevant to the story that you're telling in Cowboys, but it's, it must be a very useful kind of antidote to all the, the glitz, which is the other side of your life occasionally. Yeah, I, the glitz, you know, I just like to work. Um, I go punch in, pretend, punch out and go home. And I've always been like this. I've always kind of worked to live. And luckily it's uh, my career has continued, but uh yeah, I don't know. So I've never, I've never had it any other way. And I mean, you're, you're either grounded or you're not. Um, you can't move somewhere and all of a sudden be grounded. But uh, I like using the other side of my brain when I'm not, when I'm not acting. I imagine one of the uh, attractions for doing this movie is, and and we'll we'll talk about the heart of the movie in just a moment. But as we're talking about the wide open spaces, is the fact that this is. This is Montana. I, I've never been to Montana. I only know about it through James Lee Burke novels, and I would like mm -hmm. to visit very much. But I would imagine being an outdoors kind of guy, the fact that you were filming in Montana was a big deal. Yeah, it was. I mean, I've always been uh, attracted to scripts that in which the, you know, the environment is much as much of a character. I mean, I do a bad Western, you know, just because it's a Western. But this this movie in particular, I mean, uh, that attracted me to it, but mainly it was it was the script. I mean, Anna had written an amazing story with great characters, and I rarely, I, I can count on my right hand how many times I've kind of gone after something in the way that I went after this. You know, when you call up a director and tell him you're perfect for a part, it's usually the kiss of death. But uh, I kind of had to in this case, and. Um, she bought my pitch, and luckily I got the part. So the, the Anna you're talking about is uh, Anna Kerrigan. This is her debut feature, I think. Um, so mm -hmm. when you're going for it, when you're really pitching yourself, what, is, what does that entail? Is that, is that an audition, or is that you explaining why you'd be ideal for the part? What is, how does that work? It, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, we had like a, you know, at least an hour conversation about the script, and life in general and yeah it's me pitching why i think i'm right for it and in, in the conversation i'm like look if you want me to get in front of my computer and pretend i'm pretending which is basically an audition where you film yourself which i think is somewhat of an absurd process because <laughs> you're not really acting you're pretending to act you're acting that you're acting <laughs> this is how i might act if i were yeah. in a situation where i was acting but uh i didn't have to do that and uh i don't know it's 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 such a hard thing to pitch yourself at least for me it is i was looking at you steve and you're clean shaven and you you know you look well scrubbed however in this movie when you're playing troy uh this is a very different kind of character tell us about troy uh and sally who he's married to and their child joe tell us tell us about their relationship well, they, you know, they're an American family living in rural, in, in the outskirts, which is most of America. And, uh, you know, they're both dealt a hand that they have to play, which is a pair of twos. And they're dealing with a lot and doing the best they can and flawed. And, I don't know, that was what attracted me to it. It's, it and and their, their kid... Joe is transgender and at a very young age, 
And um, my character sees how hard this is living in, I'm, I'm separated, I'm divorced, I guess, from my wife. And uh, I see how difficult this is. And so I um, basically kidnap my kid, try to take him to Canada where life would be better. And um, to my character, this is not breaking the law. I'm just doing the best I can and trying to help my, my son. You know, so that's the, that's the, the, the plot basically that, that uh, what I love about the movie is it doesn't bang you over the head with it. You know, it's uh, it's really a beautiful story of a father and son uh, journey movie. And um, I don't know, it's really hard for me to try to describe stuff. I, if I was a director, I'd be a lot better at it. But <laughs> what it, what is it that explains, do you think, Steve, the different reactions of Troy and Sally to Joe? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, my character's bipolar and I think, you know, he's just tr daily trying to do the best he can. And, and that's really difficult. He just wants to correct things in the moment. He doesn't look beyond 24 hours and that's his charm, but that's his fault as well. And he's impulsive and a good human being um, that just gets in trouble, gets in his own way. And, um, um, he really doesn't have a problem at all with the fact that his daughter is not his daughter, but his son. Absolutely no problem. And I thought that was just brilliant. I thought that was kind of opposite of what you would stereotypically see in a script. It would be, you know, the mother, I think, that would, that would uh, react maybe differently. Hmm. And uh, your former wife, played by Gillian Bells, so... Joe's mother's reaction is kind of this is a phase right. ca yeah. caused caused by the fact that Joe clearly idolizes me. His father. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's my fault. It's it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a you know, going through a period of of tomboy tomboy kind of, you know, wearing cowboy boots and wanting to ride horses. And um, and I see it differently, but we also have a different relationship, my my son and I. And um, my son reveals to me what he's going through. And I believe it in the moment and take action. Mm. His mom is a really loving mom. She's, again, doing the best that she can. And um, sometimes the best that we can do is not always that great, but it is what it is. Yes. And the, the scene where you're talking to Joe, I think you're eating donuts, I think, uh, in the car is a, is a very powerful scene. Tell us about Sasha Knight, who plays... 11 year old Joe you've worked with kids a lot and you're you're great with them but tell us about what it was like working with Sasha Knight Sasha is just an amazing kid like from the from the get-go just a real it's just an old soul but yet this like extremely energetic kid that was really talented in so many different like it was like a like an incredible climber as a bouldering kind of rock climber as a kid which I thought was really interesting like a really good athlete and really smart and we hit it off I mean like the first minute it was uh, we we spent a lot of time before I thought it was really important to go like at least like I think I showed up like two weeks prior and we just kind of hung out and got on a horse and you know the horse was easy we were you know proved everything within an hour and then we just hung out and we worked a lot we worked a lot on the scenes and at the hotel and I don't know, you know, some kids, some kids are just, some kids just listen, you know, and that's the, that's really the, that's really the art form. That's really acting is just listening and, and reacting in the moment. And I mean, that's, that's pretty simple, but it's really hard to do. And Sasha has this unique ability to just be present all the time. And we found a way to, to, to like make it, new and fresh and Anna was really supportive of that in our own kind of way we would you know with a kid sometimes it's it's you just want to knock them off there even if it's like physically like do something you know when you when you say action just kind of like get them to not think about the scene for a second start talking about something else or throw a, a completely different line in or <laughs> shove them into a bush you know and then all of a sudden they start they start thinking in the moment, you know, and it just kind of helps. So we had our little tricks that we did. Yeah. Well, improv is something that you're pretty, <laughs> that you're pretty good at, isn't it? 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess so. I mean, I just work with Angela Kinsey on a movie and she's like a genius improviser, like amazing. I, I wonder if one of the, I mean, this maybe will get talked about a bit less, but one of the other gender stereotypes which this movie uh, unpicks a bit is the the angry, hot-headed dad, which is what people might think you are, and yet that that really doesn't work, does it, for the kind of man that Troy is? No, he's just a kid. He's kind of like a kid. I mean, he gets angry, but it's really not his fault. It's the fact that he's, you know, he needs medication to kind of, you know, keep himself steady. And we talked about that. Anna and I talked about that. Like, what? How? What? How is he bipolar? Because that just that is defined so many different ways. You know, everybody has their own kind of trip with that. And and I said, you know, I think when he gets by, when he when he has episodes, it's like he's the funnest guy in the world. If if you're into that kind of thing, and if you're not, then it can really be a horrible experience hanging out with him. But I think a kid would find it really fun, you know? <laughs> yes. And um, um, <laughs> yeah. I just thought, uh, so I kind of played them like a, a kid, like they were, they were buddies, you know, and, and, and less of a parental kind of thing. I was struck watching your film, Steve, that uh, also listening to the reaction to Francis McDormand uh, at the Oscars. Uh, we're, as we're speaking now, this is the day after. Right. Uh, the Oscar ceremonies, but she was imploring people as she was talking about Nomadland, but she was talking about all the movies and asking people to go and see it on the biggest screen possible very, very soon. And yeah. that is going to be possible uh, in in the next few weeks if, if all things work uh, the way the way they should do. But I, but this movie is certainly something. And I think people might have got just a gist of what this film looks like just listening to you talking about Montana. But this should be seen not on a phone or on a television. I think this yeah, is seen in a cinema, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it's an epic, beautiful, I mean, we shot in Glacier National Park. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful up there. Montana is just, it's the West, man. It's still like untamed in a weird way. I mean, there's still places in this country that are, that you can get lost, completely lost, you know, and you feel like you're the first person to walk you know, when I was there, I, I, I'm a big fly fisherman and I was, I was just going off constantly and getting lost fishing and it's just amazing. And, and yeah, you know, it's, t <laughs> you know, you make a movie and then a pandemic happens and then you, you wonder like, is this just going to get lost? Is this like one of those movies that I don't know. And you hope it doesn't, you know, and you hope that, um, you know, people see it. Yeah. You know? And what do we see you in next, Steve, after this? Oh, I don't know. Well, let's see. I maybe in a this. maybe in a river, just fishing. <laughs> yeah, you see me mowing my fields. Um, uh, I I did a really really fun uh, Mike White project in October that comes out on HBO this summer called The White Lotus or White Lotus, and that's um I've just seen a bunch of episodes. It's a limited series six, and uh, it's really good. It's really really a good series. I haven't been as excited about. I've been watching the episodes. I'm not finished yet, but I watch them as if I'm not in them. They're really fun. Well, Steve, we appreciate you speaking to us. Uh, Cowboys is available today uh, on digital platforms. Steve Zahn, thank you very much for speaking to us, sir. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.